Hi, I'm Reverend Mark Smallwood. Carl was my wife Christina's uncle who she grew up living beside and I've had the privilege of getting to know him over the last 16 years. Let me start by saying, Aunt Carol, I'm so sorry for what you're going through right now. To the rest of the family, let me express my deepest condolences. I wish we could all be together, hold each other up. Although we can't be together in person, we can be together in spirit. So let me open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would fill our hearts today, fill the rooms in which we are in. And God, we ask that your presence would bring about peace and healing through this service today. We ask this in your precious, holy, wonderful name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, when I was told earlier this week that Uncle Carl wanted me to be a part of his funeral service, I was taken back with a humbled sense of honor. As a pastor, I have a number of funeral services that I often go to, I take and I tweak them to the individual, but I thought to myself, I can't use a pre-written service for Uncle Carl. 
it needs to be fresh. So I started looking through my Bible for passages about fishing and gardening because, well, it is Uncle Carl we're here to celebrate. In looking at gardening in the Bible, the concept of sowing and reaping, planting and harvesting is an analogy that's found throughout the Word. You know, the past, when I would read analogies about gardening, about sowing and reaping, I would often picture in my mind farmers in their field on plows or even walking behind a horse plowing and working a field. But over the last 16 years of not only knowing Uncle Carl, but watching Uncle Carl, I don't picture the plow and the farmer when I read passages about sowing and reaping anymore because of what I came to look for, what I came to see, what I noticed every time I pulled into the driveway or walked down the road. When I read these passages now about sowing and reaping, I picture Uncle Carl sitting on this stool right here in his garden from the beginning of spring all the way into fall, whether it was sowing seeds, weeding to harvesting, from beans to horseradish, from cherry tomatoes to pumpkins, this garden, Uncle Carl's garden, took a lot of work. And thinking about him and all the work that he put in right here in this garden helps me to understand Psalm 126. Psalm 126 is all about restoration, where God brings blessing back to his people. In verse 4 of this psalm, it says, Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the streams of the Negev, to those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. This fortune is not referring to money or treasures like we would think, but it's referring to a way of life. Restore us to the way we ought to be. You know, we were originally designed not to exist with a separation from God, but to be in a continuous relationship walking with Him. The next couple of verses talk about sowing with tears and reaping with great joy. It's not so much about the sorrow in sowing, but the hard work that goes into planting, into preparing for the future. It's a reminder that planting, even in difficult soil, produces a harvest that brings joy. Carl sowed a lot of seed over his life. I mean, this garden has seen his fingers poking into the soil time and time again. But seeds in the garden are not the only seeds that he planted. And I'm not talking about his grow room in the basement. He planted faith in his heart that now has brought for him a harvest of joy that we can only dream about in this lifetime. It's a harvest that's available to anyone that plants the right seed of faith in Jesus Christ. What is the joy that awaits those who've planted this faith within their hearts? Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, in this particular portion of scripture, we see a prophetic revelation of a time yet to come for those who have planted their seed of faith in Christ. And what they will experience is God in such a magnificent way. Verse 4 uh, says this, he will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death, mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is part of the joy that awaits, and it's only revealed in part. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. To walk into this harvest, you have to plant the right seed in the right soil. Now, gardening is all about preparing for the future. This week, this character was seen in Uncle Carl when a letter was found that he had penned some six years ago before going in for heart surgery. He wanted to make sure that things were taken care of. And I had to chuckle that among the things that he had written down of that he wanted to make sure was taken care of for those that he left behind, he wrote down the right way to fish how he calculates the depth of his lure when fishing by the number of passes on the reel and how his calculation is different than the one that's found in his favorite fishing book. See, gardening wasn't the only thing that Uncle Carl loved that I wanted to talk about today. He loved fishing. I remember going out with him on his boat in in Trenton and he had his spots to go. You started trolling when you were between one landmark on one side and another landmark on the other, and not before. See, if you want to get the right fish, you have the fish in the right spot. I remember when I told him that I was going fishing for lake trout up north. Well, uh, I still have the maps that he quickly brought out and handed over to me to make sure that I went to the right spot, the spots that he had had success before. Then, as I was getting ready to leave, the lures came out because you have to have the right bait for the right fish and then the rod. That rod, it's a little old, so it holds a very special place. It brings back special memories. It hangs now in my hunting room in my basement. It doesn't catch fish, but it brings back memories. The lure from that day doesn't get used much either. Well, because I don't go after Lakers very often, but it's always with me in my tackle box. A reminder that you've got to use the right bait to catch the right fish. I loved coming back in off the ice in the winter and telling Uncle Carl how thick the ice was. How many guys were out on the bay and, of course, telling him all about the fish that were caught and, yes, the fish that were missed as well. Because telling stories is a big part of fishing. So, Uncle Carl... The other day when I heard the news that you had gone, I woke up the next morning. I packed up my gear and I headed out to the ice. I thought about you all day. The ice was about eight inches thick, just so you know. There was not another soul on the ice to be seen. And the hog that I pulled up of a splake was so delicious I had to cook it and eat it right there on the ice. It's amazing how telling stories of memories brings back joy and peace. Side note, make sure you take time in the next little while to tell your favorite Uncle Carl stories. There's so much healing in sharing our memories. But back to the fish stories, more specifically fish stories of biblical proportions. Luke knows how to tell a good fishing story. I mean, Matthew and Mark, they gloss over the details of the big catch. But Luke, Luke goes into the details like a typical fisherman while recalling how Jesus called his disciples to follow him. The scene is this. Fishermen had been out all night and they were skunked. Yet Jesus, after borrowing their boat to use as a pulpit to preach from, tells them to go fishing. They told Jesus how they had been out all night and had nothing to show for it, but because it was him who was asking, they listened. And the catch, oh, the catch, was so great that the weight of the fish began to sink their boats. What a fish story to tell. But the story ends a little differently with an odd statement from Jesus to his soon-to-be disciples. Luke 5 verse 10 says, Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. I mean, at first glance, you had to shake your head and say, What? Fishers of men catching men? What? Leave your boats after such an epic catch like that? But what Jesus was getting at is that they would spend their lives making Jesus' message of love 
grace and forgiveness known to everyone so that people all over the world would have the opportunity to have relationship with God, to be forgiven from every wrongdoing, every failure, every unrighteous act or thought through what Jesus would accomplish on the cross. See, accepting that message, inviting Jesus into one's life, repenting and being forgiven, turning and living for him, brings one into the boat, into the kingdom of God. It's the hope that we have and you can have in Jesus. It's the faith that Uncle Carl had planted and reaffirmed just a few weeks ago when he called on Mother to come and Pray with him and make sure that everything was right. See, if you want to have the harvest of joy that Uncle Carl has walked into this week, you have to plant the right seed. If you want to catch the right fish, you've got to use the right bait, know the right spot, and be ready to tell the story. See, the right spot is the cross. The right bait is an open and willing heart saying, God, I'm ready to receive forgiveness from you. I want relationship with you. And to be ready to tell the story, if that's you today, if you want to make sure that your life is right with God, tell somebody. Tell someone that you want to have relationship with God. I'm so grateful for knowing Uncle Carl, but even more grateful that he knew how to garden and how to fish for things of utmost importance. May the knowledge of his faith in Christ and the peace that he has now in heaven, coupled with Holy Spirit's presence, bring you comfort and healing in this time. You are not alone. God is right there by your side, walking with you through this season of grief and loss. Would you bow your heads and would you pray with me right now? God, it's with heavy hearts that we come before you this day. Lord, we ask that today that you would bring peace and comfort into Aunt Carol and to the entire family. Father, we ask that the peace that Uncle Carl now has in you, God, that it would bring comfort to our hearts. God, we ask that your presence would be made known and that you would begin today Begin a healing within our hearts. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for the life that Uncle Carl had lived. We thank you for his faith in you. And we ask that that faith would be passed on from generation to generation. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.